Hi everyone, Lyra and I are back in a video and I know lots of you have exams right now. You may be sitting real exams, so real IGCSEs, GCSEs, A-levels and IB, or you may be doing a school version of exams or somewhere in between that. But I just wanted to make this video because I know a lot of you have exams coming up and these are kind of my five ways in which people often make mistakes and lose easy marks. I don't want to say, you know, five reasons why people fail their exams because I'm a positive person. I did want people to watch this video, so I suppose I chose quite an inflammatory title, but hopefully you'll see this is quite a positive thing. Let me know in the comments below what you think. So the number one thing I noticed, and this is kind of applicable across many subjects, but obviously being science hazel, I am really focusing on the science. Number one is not answering the question actually being asked. And I find this so often with my tutees that I teach. You know, you've done an awful lot of work. You've revised so much. <laughs> Does she look happy? You've revised so much. You've got some pretty high level stuff stored away in your head. So when there's a question and you're like, no, you can't be asking this. It must be far more complicated. And you end up writing an answer which isn't technically answering the question. So whatever you're doing, answer the question being asked. And a good example of this, when they say, provide the word equation for the complete combustion of ethane. And too many times I've seen my tutees give me a balanced symbol equation and it's often very accurate. It's completely right, which is great. But the thing is, the question asks for the word equation. So you need to be providing the word equation. Sometimes the mark scheme is generous and allows you to provide that balanced chemical equation. But why would you do that if they're asking for the word equation? Provide what they are asking, and that is certainly applicable across all different subjects. What's going on? The second reason people don't do as well as they could is they're not fully prepared. And that preparation is kind of twofold. It's making sure you go to bed at a reasonable time the night before. There really is very little point in pulling all-nighters. It's much more important that you go into your exam with a clear mind and that allows you to access thoughts, memories from months, weeks before, even if you haven't technically looked at the stuff the minute before the exam. I do recommend that you don't try and pull all-nighters, that you do try and get a good night's sleep and you go into the exam feeling fairly rested, fairly clear-minded. With that in mind, preparation is key, so do make sure you go with the right apparatus. So if you're going to a physics exam, it's not just having your pencil, your pen, your ruler to draw those graphs, to answer those questions. If you're doing an exam that involves the refractive index, for example, sine i over sine r, you need a protractor there. So do make sure you've fully looked up the different pieces of apparatus you need. The third point I want to make is to not waffle in your answers. You'll often find in science papers, particularly biology ones, You'll see big, long answer spaces. Don't feel like you have to fill all of that. Much more important is using key scientific terminology. Don't just write the same thing five times with lots of extraneous material. Focus in on what that question is asking and make sure you're answering it. Writing a load of stuff which isn't really relevant isn't going to help you at this point. So with science, you do need to be very specific. Fourth point, units, units, units. Do make sure if it says specify a unit specify a unit. Don't ignore that. Don't lose that easy mark. If you're not sure on how to do the calculation, have a look if they provided a unit, because if it's something like kj slash mole, then that tells you that the equation you should be using has energy at the top, kj, divided by number of moles. So even if you can't remember the equation for enthalpy change, hopefully that unit will help you. So like I said, don't forget to provide the units if you're asked to. Don't forget to look over those key units before your exam. This is particularly important in physics. And along with that comes the point where they specify a number of significant figures. If they say two significant figures, provide two significant figures. Don't just freestyle it here. You've got to answer what the question specifically says. And obviously another note of units, make sure you're actually providing the right type of unit. If it's micrometers versus millimeters in biology, megawatts versus kilowatts in physics, do make sure you double check those units. My fifth point here as to why people don't do so well in their exams or as well as they should is not distinguishing correctly between the words describe and explain. And again, that comes from trying to really show how well you know your science or that content. If you're asked to describe a graph or a results table, that just means say what you see. It really shouldn't involve that much science. It's really things like there's a positive correlation the data is directly proportional. 
As the temperature increases, enzyme activity increases. It's only when the word explain is involved should you be providing a scientific reason. So why does temperature cause an increase in enzymatic activity? Obviously to a certain point. Well, that's because the enzymes and the substrates have more kinetic energy and collisions occur more frequently between them. So really notice that I'm distinguishing between describing that graph and explaining. Now, let me know in the comments below how you're feeling about your exams. I hope everyone's in an OK mind space. I know it's been incredibly stressful not knowing if exams have been cancelled, how your schools, how your education centres are actually going to provide you with these qualifications. But do keep working consistently. I promise this time is nearly over. And let me know in the comments below how you're doing. Don't forget to follow me on Insta for those daily quizzes that everyone seems to find super helpful.